the mountains You who calm the seas You who made the heavens You who first loved me It is you, you, Yeshua It is you
to the central creed of our faith and what Yeshua the Messiah said was the most important commandment of all. Please join Cantor Steve as he leads us in the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivon Malchuto Leolam Vaed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your life and with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as reminders on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. 
write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi yagid tehilatecha Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise Yananai lai lai yananai lai lai yananai Adonai Adonai, open up my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Yalalai lai lai, 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 yalalai lai lai. Grant us, Lord our God, the knowledge of your ways. Direct our hearts to your worship. Forgive us so that we may be redeemed. Keep us from suffering. Satisfy us with the produce of the earth and our dispersed gather from the four corners of the earth. And those who stray from your knowledge judge, and upon the wicked make your hand heavy. And may the righteous rejoice at the building of your house, the construction of your temple, the flourishing of the throne of David your servant, and the lengthening of the light of your Messiah Yeshua, the son of Jesse. Before we call, answer us. Blessed are you, O Lord, who hears prayer. Baruch atah Adonai, v'elohei avotenu, v'elohei Abraham, v'elohei Yitzchak, v'elohei Yaakov, v'el ha-gadol ha-gibor v'hanara, el el yom kona shemayim v'aretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and revered God, the most high God, master of heaven and earth. He, with his word, was a shield to our forefathers, and by his voice will raise the dead, the holy God, like whom there is none, who gives rest to his people on his holy Sabbath day, because he delights in them to grant them rest. Before his presence, we will serve with fear and awe. Daily and constantly, we will thank him with the appropriate praises. He is the God to whom thanksgiving is due, the Lord of peace, who hallows the Sabbath and blesses the seventh day, and in holiness gives rest to a people filled with delights in remembrance of the creation. Our God and God of our fathers, accept our rest. Hallow us by your commandments and grant our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you truthfully and in your love and favor, O Lord our God, let us inherit your holy Sabbath. And may Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest thereon. Blessed are you, O Lord, who hallows the Sabbath. Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-Shabbat. Amen. 
Kadosh, 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 Adonai Savaot, Malo Kol Haaretz Kavodo. For you are holy, for you are worthy, and you are mighty, Lord of hosts. For you are holy, for you are worthy, and the whole earth is filled with your glory. Lord, you are high and lifted up, and now before your throne with the angels we bow down and worship you alone. For you are holy, for you are worthy, and you are mighty, Lord of hosts. For you are holy, for you are worthy, and the whole earth is filled with your glory. The whole earth is filled with your glory. My God, guard my lips from evil and my tongue from speaking deceit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You who establishes peace in the heavens, grant peace to us and to all Israel. May it be your will that Jerusalem be solidly established in our days, O Lord, our God and God of our fathers. May the service of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasing to you. There we will serve you with all as in days of old. We offer all our prayers in the name of Yeshua Ha Mashiach. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Baruch atah Adonai, asher natan lunu etterek ha-Yeshua, the Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, O Lord, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. He walked among us, filled with your spirit, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught. With authority, he brought forth the treasures of the Torah. How the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean. How the despised and outcast found love and release from their sin. How the hypocrites feared him, whose words uncovered their sin. Despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turn everyone to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world, his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who has given us Messiah Yeshua, our King. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu asher natan lanu, Mashiach Yeshua malkeinu. Amen. Avinu, Avinu, Shabbat Shomayim, Yikadesh, Yikadesh Shimcha, Tavo Malchutcha, Yeat Sheritzancha, Kebat Shomayim, Cain, Baaretz. Our Father in heaven, may your name be hallowed. May your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into trials, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory is yours forever. Amen. Amen.
I know, I know. Yeshua the Messiah also said, if you really believe Moshe, you would believe me, because it was about me that he wrote. Speaking, of course, of the Torah, we now begin our Torah service with Av Harachamin, Father of Compassion. Deal kindly with Zion according to your will. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. For we trust in you alone, O King, revered and honored God, master over the entire universe. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forward, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. By him in Tzoharon, by Omer Moshe, Kumadonai, the Afutu Evecha, the Anusu Misanecha, me Panecha, Kimitium, Tate Torah, Kimitium. Tate Torah, Udvar Adonai, me a Rushalayim, Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah. Leamo Yisrael, big to shato. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Unique is our God, great is our Lord, holy and revered is his name. Exalt the Lord with me, and let us extol his name together. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Echad Eloheinu, Godol Adonainu, Kadosh Vinorashamo, God the Lula Adonai, Etin Ramama, Shemo Yachda. Who is like you among the gods, my Lord? Who is like you? Glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders.
when do I you're, you're open. Hello, good morning, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen you, a uh, long time since we've seen each other, but uh, we gotta believe that this virus thing is gonna come to an end soon, and we'll regather. Uh, we didn't have Passover Seder last year because of the virus, and I'm not sure we're gonna have it this year either, but the, um, the, the talk this morning from Rabbi Foreman's disciples um, is uh, about Passover, really. The Exodus is connected to the Passover, and the, uh, they've done some very interesting commentary on uh, the Exodus that I think helps inform what we do at Passover. And after this is over, I'm gonna share a short devotion with you, but uh, th you'll enjoy this, especially the Babe Ruth part of it. All you baseball fans know who Babe Ruth is. If you don't know who Babe Ruth is, uh, I have to pray for you. Okay, let's go. Epic speeches inspire us. They paint a picture of a better future. Martin Luther King Jr. emphatically said, I have a dream. And with those words, he acknowledged suffering and inspired us to believe that things can change. It seems that that's exactly what God tries to do at the beginning of our Parsha. He notices the Israelites suffering and promises a better future. Vigam anishamati at na'kat b'nei Israel. Neck brace. That's because uh, about two months ago when I, when I fell, they had to do surgery on my neck and they had to cut in there and stuff like that. So the surgeon insists that I keep wearing a neck brace for uh, maybe, maybe three months. Um, I take it off when I sleep, fortunately. But um, I want to I share a few thoughts with you. Uh, a really cool thing happened uh, the other day, last, yesterday. I had mentioned to the uh, chaplain that comes around to visit everybody that we were Jewish and wondered if they had any Shabbat, Shabbat supplies because here we are in a hospital, um, uh, Lisa and I, and they said, yeah, they'll bring something by. So in this little package that says, a get well wish, they brought, they brought us um, two little challahs about the size of a dinner roll, but they were challahs. They were shaped like, you know, grated bread challahs. And they brought us these two candles so we could light candles. Uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't allow us to uh, light real candles, so they have these fake things that you just you, know, you just turn them on by pushing the bottom or something like that. Um, so that we had candles and they had some grape juice. I said, can I get a bottle of wine? He said, no. Anyway, so we enjoyed the grape juice. So Lisa and I had a little Shabbat dinner together uh, last night. Um, the, uh, I should just tell you that my, my stay here has been extended uh, by two weeks. The, um, the people who uh, are responsible for my, the team that's responsible for my getting better, and I'm getting a, I'm getting a lot better, folks, really. Um, thought I, if I had two more weeks, I could really do much, much better. So they made arrangements, I think, that we'll have two more weeks. So uh, we won't be back to, to Maryland for two more weeks, uh, like mid-February. But, you know, we won't see you anyway because of COVID. So anyway, but I have a, um, in that little packet that we got from this group, um, there was a little devotional thought about the Torah portion that I thought was choice, and I'm going to read it to you now. This week's Torah portion, Vaera, describes the first seven of the ten plagues that were the prelude to the liberation of our ancestors uh, from Egypt. And so uh, when we celebrate Passover uh, each year, it really has to do with more than just um, uh, eating food. It has to do with our liberation from slavery in Egypt. Um, um, the thrilling and dramatic liberation entailed a sudden and complete transformation uh, in both the physical and spiritual realms. Physically, the change was extremely dramatic. In our ancestors' bitter slavery, they were broken in body and spirit by the cruelest forms of forced labor. And sometimes, even today, we might feel broken in body and spirit. Many people, I think, are really crushed by what's happening with COVID and businesses closing up and, and people going into financial ruin. Uh, so we know that this, this bitterness can take place anytime. Yet suddenly, 
they emerged from slavery as free people, bold and dignified, with an outstretched arm and with great wealth. God chose to step into the action and redeemed and rescued our people. Israel's spiritual liberation was no less dramatic. After sinking to the lowest degree of unholiness, because our people were actually affiliating with the Egyptian folks and their gods, and it was just a mishmash of craziness. Uh, when they were at the lowest point of un unholiness to the point of pagan idol worship, they suddenly, at the crossing of the Red Sea, perceived God, revealed in his full glory. Seven weeks later, they stood at the foot of Mount Sinai at the highest level of holiness and and prophecy, so God spoke to them without any uh, mediator and declared, I am the Lord your God. So we know that story. That's the story of, of um, Pentecost, of Shavuot. And we'll, we'll be uh, speaking of these things as we go through the spring holidays. Um, this explains the reason for the hasty depart departure from Egypt. The Exodus was primarily to escape the evil and impurity in which the Israelites had become immersed. Therefore, it was imperative for them to leave swiftly. They had to get away from all the perversions. That, that's the point this, this writer is making. Each and every day, we are instructed to remember the exodus from Egypt. The message that stands out from this week's Torah portion is that each person, each, each Jew, and then I would say each person, has the inner capacity and actual um, ability to transform himself positively in a short amount of time, suddenly from one extreme to the opposite. I do believe that that can happen. I do believe that people can have amazing changes. Um, my time here at the hospital, I'll, I'll probably be sharing about this more. I have gone from not able to walk at all to um, walking. Uh, I took 200 steps yesterday with the help of a walker. So I'm making incredible progress. I had much more than I knew. So I'm an example of somebody who can go from the, from the bottom to the top uh, and, and, and in a short amount of time by being persistent and having hope and believing that God would heal me. So that's a little, some thoughts from me, your rabbi for the morning to go with the portion and Carrie, if you'd like to continue with the service, that'd be fine. The Torah blessing. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavu Rach. Baruch Adonai Hamavu Rach. Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bochar Bonu Mikol Ha'amim. V'natan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. By Yomer Adonai al Moshe, Atatira Asher Asel Faro, Kibiyad Chazaka Yishlechem, Uviyad Chazaka Yitav Shem Meretzo. By the Bear Elohim al Moshe, by Yomer, I love Ani Adonai, by Ra'el Avraham al Yitzchak, Val Yaakov, by El Shaddai, Yishmi Adonai, Lo no Daiti Lahem. Agam Hakimoti at Briti Tom, at Etlahem at Eretz Kanaan, at Eretz Megurehem, Asher Garuba. Agam Anishamayati at Nakat Bene Israel, Asher Mitraim Mavidim O Tom, Eskur at Briti Lakain, Mar Vigne Israel, Ani Adonai, Hotseti at Kem Mitahat, Sivlot Mitraim, Hotelti at Kem. This is what happened. Adalti at Kem Bizroa Natuya Vishvatim Gadolim Lakakti at Kem Leila Am Paiti Lachem Leilohim Hidai at Kem Kiani Adonai Elohechem Motsi at Kem Mitahat Zivlot Mitraim Heveti at Kem El Haaretz Asher Nasati at Yadi Latet Ota Avraham Leitzhak Liakov Natati Ota Lachem Marasha Ani Adonai.
I don't see David, so Adonai said to Moshe, now you will see what I am going to do to Pharaoh. With a mighty hand, he will send them off. With force, he will drive them from the land. God spoke to Moshe. He said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Avraham, Yitzhak, Yitzhak and Yaakov as El Shaddai. Although I did not make myself known to them by my name, yud heh vah Adonai, also with them I established my covenant to give them the land of Canaan, the land where they wandered about and lived as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians are keeping in slavery and have remembered my covenant. Therefore, Say to the people of Israel, I am Adonai. I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians, rescue you from their oppression, and redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am Adonai, your God, who frees you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, I will give it to you as your inheritance. I am Adonai. Amen. <laughs> Vizod ha Torah, Asher Son Moshe, Leaf Nebene Yisrael, Pi Adonai, Viad Moshe. Baruch ato Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bochar, Vinivim Tovim, Virat Sovadivrahem, Ane Amorim Behemet, Boruchato Adonai, Abocher Batorah, Uber Moshe Abdo, Uber Israel Amo, Uvim Vieha Emet, Bot Sedek. Amen. Ko amar Adonai Elohim, v'kabsi at Beit Yisrael min ha'amim asher nafotsu bam, v'nikdash ti bam leine ha'goyim, v'yashfir alat batam asher natati lavdi v'yarkov, v'yashfir leha levetach, v'anu batim v'natu karamim, v'yashfir levetach v'asoti shavatim, the call has a team of um, no, but team, the Natukara mean the Ashfu la Vetakba, so T, Shafatim, the call has a team of Tom, to the vote, to the vote, Tom, the Aduki, a the Noyal of Hayham. Adonai Elohim says, Once I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered. Once I have shown my holiness in them as the Goyim watch, then they will live in their own land, which I gave to my servant Yaakov. They will have security when they live there, building houses and planting vineyards. Yes, they will live in security once I have executed judgments against all their contemptuous neighbors. Then they will know that I am Adonai, their God. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Tzur kahal amim Tzadik b'chol hadorot Ha'el ha'ne'eman homer v'oseh Ha'medaber mekayim Shekol devarav emet v'tzedek Amen it's high, he, 
למחזיקים בו ותומכיה מאושר דרכיה דרכי נועם וכל נתיבותיה שלום השיבנו אדוני אליך ונשובו חדש חדש יומנו חדש יומנו כקדם. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו משיח ישוע והדברים של ברית החדשה ברוך אתה אדוני נותן ברית החדשה אמן Galatians 5, what the Messiah has freed us for is freedom. Therefore, stand firm and don't let yourselves be tied up again to a yoke of slavery. John 8, 31 to 34. If you obey what I say, then you are really my Talmudim. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered, we are the seed of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. So what do you mean by saying you will be set free? Yeshua answered them, yes, indeed. I tell you that everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Okay. Am I supposed to read? Yes. Amen. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone will be honored. His majesty is above earth and heaven, and he will raise the status of his people and cause praise for all his devoted ones, for the children of Israel, a people close to him, praise God. When the ark rested, Moses would say, return, O Lord, to the myriads of Israel's families. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark, clothe your priests with righteousness. May those who have experienced your faithful love shout for joy, Baruch Hashem. For the sake of your servant David, don't delay the return of your Messiah. I give you good instruction, do not forsake my Torah. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו הדבר החי במשיח ישוע. אמן. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gives us the living word in the Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Joining us once again from California, let us welcome Sean Emsley. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be back with you. And uh, this is our, our uh, seventh, seventh time together looking at the book of Philippians. 
And uh, we're now going to the start of chapter four of Philippians. I'm trying to find my notes here. There's my notes. And uh, we have a, a timely, a timely section, section to look at with all that's going on in our, our world today. It's amazing how that works out that God's words that was spoken to, to Philippi, you know, over in the, in the, around 60 of the common era is uh, relative to us today here living in America in the 2021. So in, so in Philippians 4, this is the final chapter of the book of Philippians, we will be looking at, at uh, what could be one of the issues of Paul's writing letter. Paul usually has, has some, some problem in the community or some issue to, to, uh, to deal with in the communities he writes letters to. And in the beginning of chapter four, we see an issue of disunity in the community and we'll be, be looking at his call to, to bring the community together. And uh, throughout the letter, Paul says that disunity is grounded in lack of humility, that pride is a source of, of uh, disunity in the community, especially in the Messianic community. It's important that all the people understand the humble example of Messiah and live out the, the modeling of the Messiah's example. In verse one of chapter four, we read, so my brothers whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, my dear friends keep standing firm in union with the Lord. So as Paul begins this, this, this final chapter of the book, he's, he's, he's speaking here of, of athletic competition. And as the victor of the athletic competition will receive a prize, using an olive branch or wreath, I'm talking about the, a crown here, Paul considers the relationship and ministry to the Philippians to be his prize for the faithful service and a great source of joy in his final days. As Paul, as Paul is coming to the end of his life, he's, he is, is sharing with the Philippian community that his deep love for them and that it's because of their faithfulness in service to him and their faithfulness to the Messiah that he really sees them as a prize of his many years of service to the Lord as he's looking over over his life and looking to the soon soon completion of his journey with, with his pending execution under, under Nero. He really rejoices over the pet fact that the Philippian community really got it. They really understood the message that he had and lived it out and, and like him sought to model the Messiah. Paul shares that the Philippians are great joy to him and despite his suffering and impending execution, he can rejoice their faith in Yeshua. And they're growing more like the Messiah as a spiritual reward, a crown for their and his faithfulness to God. So as Paul's looking to the end of his life, he sees that, that one of the, the great sources of joy and great truth of achievement of his life, that he sees as a crown like a victor would receive in a, Olympic event that the people of Philippi, by following his example of following the Messiah, he can see that as as a as a as a crown, as a as a as a as a source of source of uh, joy in his life, despite the difficulties he has being imprisoned and knowing that his his impending execution is near. He can rejoice knowing that the people in Philippi or following the example of the Messiah. In verse two, we come to the issue of the, of the disunity in the community, where we read, I beg Avodia and I beg Syntyche to agree with each other and in union with the Lord. As Paul concludes this letter, he mentions, mentions the possible, a possible prime reason for this letter, confronting this disunity in the community, because a disagreement between Avodia and Syntyche two women who were in leadership among the Yeshua believers in Philippi. So as, 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 as with many things with Paul, he, 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 he's writing to people who actually know the issues that he's speaking about. So in this, he doesn't really elaborate what's the problem between Avodia and Sitting. There are two 
two women of prominence in the Philippine Messianic community. And as we'll see, that he can refer to them as fellow workers. So these women had some, some area of leadership in the, in the Messianic community in Philippi. And they have a disagreement with, between them. As I said, we don't, you know, Paul, Paul know, being that he's writing to them and they already know the issues going on, he doesn't explain that. So that's kind of something we have to, have to kind of uh, try to discern what could be the, the, the point of conflict with them. Whatever, whatever that is, there is an issue between these two women. And as, as we've talked about the, the ongoing theme throughout the book, of, of Philippi and the to the Philippians is that Paul's calling the community to model the self sacrifice and humility of the Messiah. So they're, they're so given that we could see there's possibly some issue issue of of not of lack of service or lack of hum, of uh, humility or a pride issue between between these two two women leaders in the community. But because of that, there's this, this unity throughout the whole community. And it's interesting in the opening of the, the opening of the book in, in verses one and two, where Paul basically gives the, the who, he's, who he's addressing the letter to basically the, the, uh, the uh, address label for the, the letter. He speaks about, he, 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 he keys on the that the letter is is to the community but also also to the leaders and the the shamashim to, to the congregational leaders of shamashim the the uh both the both the zakanim the elders and the deacons in the community and i and this and this this fits well with this part here in in uh, chapter four that that uh, he he wants to be sure that those who get the letter understand that he's calling on those who are in leadership to deal with this leadership problem in Philippi, which is causing disunity th throughout the whole community because the leadership community is in disunion. And by their disunity, they're not reflecting the Messiah. They're not reflecting the unity and the humility and the self-sacrifice of the Messiah that Paul is, is, is committing unto them and calling them to model as as he models in his life, Paul here in this uh, in this verse uses the the Greek word parakaleo, which means beg, urge, exhort, appeal to. In using this word, he shows the deep importance of this issue to him. That he's begging them, begging these two women who are in conflict, that for the sake of their own lives, for their own witness, and their own walking, following Messiah, and also for the larger community, which they affect as leaders, as examples of community. But Paul uses this word that he's begging them, urging them, exhorting them to come together for the sake of the, of the whole community. And that these, these two leaders being in disunity are setting up a disunity between the whole Philippian community and the whole witness of the, the Philippian community to the, the to those in Philippi and, and throughout the world. Paul has been dealing with the importance of humility with the positive examples of himself in chapter one, the ultimate example of humility, Yeshua, our righteous Messiah, in chapter two. We also see two in chapter the later part of chapter two, Timothy and Epaphroditus, who are two, two people familiar to those in Philippi who were modeling the Messiah. And also we saw in chapter three, the contrasting what, uh, what Dr. David Stern calls the negative example of humility, the, the example of the pride of, of the, the false teachers who were coming to Philippi. And now we see, see another call here to the importance of following the example of the Messiah by Paul calling the, com the community, calling these two women, Evodia and Syntyche, to resolve the issue between them for the sake of, of the community, for the unity and for the modeling of Messiah that uh, must come from the community. Paul's, Paul's early emphasis in the letter on humility, leading unity, sheds light on the issue of pride and lack of humility in the relationship of Odie and Syntyche. 
which not only affected them, was also a concern for the whole Philippian Messianic community. As I said, with the importance of leadership, leadership the, the whole direction of a, of a congregation, the whole direction of, of the, the community of faith is, is dependent on having strong leadership that is in line with the, the walking in the way of the Messiah, modeling the Messiah. And because of the, this disunity between these two women leaders in leadership, Evodia and Syntyche, there is, there is disunity that can spread throughout the whole community. And Paul is, is deeply calling them to uh, resolve whatever issue they have between him. And Paul, Paul also in, the, in this verse uses the Greek word phroneo, which means referring specifically to the attitude of people to one another. And Paul also used this word in uh, Philippians, chapter two, five, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, where he was talking about having the same mind as Messiah Yeshua, as, as he goes into the, the Messianic hymn, that he wants, wants these two women to be of the same mind, to have the mind mindset of humility modeled by the Messiah. As, as, we, as we read in Philippians 2, 5, it says, you know, that you are to have this same mindset of Messiah Yeshua, who, who was the model of humility. Paul then is, is here calling on Evodi and Syntyche to unite for the sake of the community. Paul is reminding these women that their mindset should be that of the Messiah and calling them to put aside their wrong attitude in order to model Yeshua, who is their ultimate example. Unity in Philippi and with any Messianic community required the people to follow the example of Yeshua and model his self-sacrificing humility. Such behavior was particularly important for leaders, which is a voting and syndicate, who were in a position of influence in their community. As Paul called, Paul, as Paul called on, on the Philippians and asked by example to follow his example as he follows the example of the Messiah, he's calling on these, these women leaders, Evodian Syntyche, to model the Messiah so that the people in Philippi will see their example and model their example of following the Messiah. As Paul modeled the Messiah, he expected those in the leadership to do the same. And we can, we can see, see how, how all the, in our, our life now, especially in, in, the, in the light of the, the pandemic and also the various issues of, of political unrest over this, over this last year, but there's been a lot of people who have been in disunion with one another because of, of different, different positions from over, over the issues of, of how to deal with the pandemic, you know, the various, various arguments, stuff over whether people are, is a, is a pro mass person or an anti-masker. And we also, also have seen the, the, the tragedy of, 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 uh, of political unrest from both both the left and the right over this last year, and this 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 disunity, sadly enough, is this disunity of our large society, has sadly worked its way into, into the life of our messianic community, and and we need to understand that, that our focus needs to be on modeling Messiah, and seeking to find unity, in our diversity. We have can have different ways of looking at things, but our, our call is to be one in the Messiah. And as you know, as, as, the, as, we, as we see the, this great concern of disunity in Philippi because of the, of the poor example of Bodhi and Syntyche and their issue of, of disunion, Paul called, called, the, called for them deeply for them to, for the sake of, themselves and for the larger community for them to come together we we need today in our lives to seek to model the messiah and to model the humility that he he showed us and to seek to uh to model model him and especially for those who are in leadership to be a model of, of the unity that we have in the messiah and, and as a model 
of that Messiah-like example of humility. You know, as, as, as pride was an issue, issue in Philippi, which brought, brought disunion between these two leaders in the community, you know, we have to, to deal with and with pride in our own, on our own lives and, and seek to rid that, that which causes disunion amongst the community. In verse three, you can continue on. And Paul says, I request you, loyal Zygus, Zygus, to help these women, for they have worked hard proclaiming the good news with me, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So Paul here, here refer, appeals to, his, to, uh, to this as to Sisygus, which is a proper name in Dr. David's, in the complete Jewish Bible. And also in other, other translations, they, they just translate the word, which means, means uh, fellow worker or coworker to, 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 uh, to refer to this person, basically a third party that Paul is, is calling in to be a, a, a source of counsel to, to these women who are in, in uh, these leaders who are in conflict. And he calls on, he calls on Sisygus, this fellow worker, to help bring unity in the community by assisting Evodia and Syntyche to resolve issues that divide them. So, so now, now Paul has called on them to, to work things out and also called on another leader in the community, Sisygus, which he, his fellow worker, person he is, he's familiar with, to assist these women to just deal with whatever the issue that they're having between them, whatever is causing the disunion, which threatens the whole of the community. And this is important to see that, that you know, that there's an important role to play for other, others in leadership when there is disunity among those in, in, on the leadership team, the leadership group groupings, that it's important for those who are who are walking in the example of the Messiah to, to step up and to uh, be a source of, of, of counsel, a source of, of uh, calling those who are out of union with, with the, the Messiah and out of union with one another to come back together. And, and here we see Sisyga stepping up and being called to take on this important role of, of being a peacemaker between these two leaders who are in conflict. And here Paul referred to Vodi and Syntyche as his fellow workers, a relative of their close working relationship with Paul in ministry. So not, not, only, not only were these, these, these women in a role of, of uh, leadership in the community, but Paul is also saying that, he's, that they're fellow workers with him, that he, is, he has actually worked with them in ministry. So he knows these, these two women, he cares deeply for them, and he knows that that for their betterment, for the betterment of the, the Messianic community in Philippi, he calls them to, to come together and uh, to have the same mind and the same, same uh, unity that, that, that uh, he calls the whole community to. Like Paul, they would have faced persecution for their commitment to the work of spreading the good news of Messiah. So these are these are people that that, that these two women are, are people that Paul is familiar with and, and has served side by side of them, and they like him have have had to face persecution for their faith. So he's calling them, you know, you've stood stood strong throughout throughout your time as a follower of Yeshua. Now I'm calling you back to union with one another that you know to model that that unity of the Messiah. As leaders of the community, their lack of unity affects the whole of the Messianic community in Philippi. Throughout his letter, Paul calls the Philippians to, to unit, to unity, to unite by modeling the humility of Yeshua. And here, as he closes the letter, he calls for union and humility to begin among the leaders of the community, especially Vodi and Syntyche, as they, like Paul, serve examples up for the people. You know, the importance of Vodi and Syntyche is that, is that they have a position of a prominence in the community 
and they are they are in a position of being an example to the community. So call, Paul calls them, you know, as they are to model the Messiah, they need to be a model for others in the Messianic community to see the unity and the the humble self-sacrifice of Yeshua. In addressing the conflict between these two women leaders, Paul stresses the importance of accountability for all in the Philippian community, from the leaders to everyone. Paul's emphasis on the importance of the leaders here, serving the examples of the Messiah as a theme throughout the letter. This is Paul using himself, Timothy, Epaphroditus, and in this verse, Clement as examples. He also wants a Vodian syndicate to resolve the disunity, looking examples of Messiah to those over which they have influence. As I said earlier, in the opening of the, of the letter, Paul addresses the congregational leaders in Shamashim, clarifying that Philippi had an established leadership structure, and he wanted to make sure the Philippian Messianic community leaders were listening to his example. You know, making the point that this is, that this is his one his one letter that he actually refers to the leadership of the community in the in the address, you know, is 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 important here because as he as as he comes to the end of this letter, he's speaking about an issue of, of leadership in the community. As leaders of the community model the Messiah, their example should draw the people to follow the examples of Yeshua. Paul places great importance on the unity and Messiah-like modeling of the leaders as they model the Messiah. And he makes clear his intent to bring Avodian and Siddiqui back together as one in the Messiah for their own sake, as well as for the betterment of the community. So the call here is, is, to, is to one, to Avodian and Siddiqui to resolve the issues between them, but also Paul is calling on all those who are in leadership in Philippi to, to come with these, with these women who are in conflict and seek to, to bring them back together so there would be a unified body of Messiah in Philippi and that they could all work to, to, for the, the glorification of God and for moving the community forward. Since the Philippians highly value the Roman citizenship and, and the prominence Philippi's Roman colony, Paul declares that through their faith in Yeshua, they have even greater citizenship. We talked about that last week. We're in Romans, in uh, Philippians 3.20, where it talks about that you are, we are citizens of heaven. So Paul here is talking about the citizenship in heaven by being a part, being written in the book of life. So after, after, after Paul has, has deal, dealt here in these, in these first few verses, with the issue of disunity in the community, this disunion between Avodi and Syntyche, and calling on them to work out whatever their issues are, whatever, whatever issues of, of pride or not, not uh, living in union with one another, not, not modeling the Messiah. And he calls on, on uh, Syzygus and Clement and other leaders to step up and to uh, assist them in coming back into union. Paul goes on in verse four to say, rejoice in union with the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So after dealing with this issue of disunity, Paul moves in, in these next verses to focus on, on the life of, of following the Messiah and, and, and calling people to, to understand the joy that there is in Messiah. Here Paul calls Philippians in this famous verse to rejoice, not as a temporary feeling or emotion, but as joy that is a staying power based on their faith commitment to Yeshua. This joy is not a, just an emotion, but an authentic experience of God's faithfulness. And it's a continued promise of guidance, provision, protection, and direction. So Paul here, Paul here is, is you know, dealing with this, this important, heavy issue of the disunity between the Vodian and the key. And, and, now, and now he moves on to speak about the joy that they can and should have as followers in the Messiah. And this is not a, as I said, not a, not a joy which is just an outward emotion, but a deep inner experience of knowing 
God through the Messiah, knowing God's faithfulness and knowing that he, he has kept his promises and he will continue to, to keep his promises and provide for, protect, and guide. The cause for the Philippians rejoicing is the good news that the Messiah will soon return, and then they, along with all the redeemed, will enter the Messianic kingdom and the new life forever with Yeshua. This assurance of death's defeat guarantees the righteous, eternal reign of Messiah would begin. So Paul here is, is now focusing the mind of those in Philippi on the deep joy that they should have because of their, their connection to the God of Israel through their faith, trust in Messiah. And that this is a deep inner joy based on God's faithfulness. And because of God's faithfulness to his promises, you know, he is, he is faithful to, to deliver them through the difficulties of the world that they live in. In verse 5, we read, Let everyone see how reasonable and gentle you are. The Lord is near. And this, this here, this here is, can, also, can also be tied to the, the example of, you know, as, as, as the, the leadership of the community of, of Syndicate and of Odia, we talked about earlier, that, they, that their example of the community was in disarray because of their conflict between them. And Paul here now, in, in addressing the whole of the community, says that everyone should be reasonable and gentle. The Lord is near. So Paul is now committing to the whole community that, that they need to follow the example of the Messiah and live reasonable and gentle lives, and lives that are, are modeling of the Messiah, that the, that the whole community is responsible for their life in Messiah, and all of them need to, to model the Messiah's example of humble self-sacrifice and willingness to serve others. So not only the leaders, but also all the people are to be examples of the Messiah. In verse 6, and this will be, this will be closing our time together today, we come to to this verse, don't worry about anything. On the contrary, make your request known to God by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. In this memorable verse, cha verse six, chapter four is full of, full of uh, many verses that people are familiar with and are, are uh, well, well remembered and recited. But this verse six, we see the teaching of the Philippians about the importance of prayer as a source of breaking from worry. The greatest counter to worry is to place all concerns on God in prayer. And Dr. Stern in his Jewish New Testament commentary made it a powerful point about this verse. So often, so often you just figure it's like that, uh, you know, just saying don't work that, you know, that there's just that we are to make our request known to God by prayer and petition, which is a good thing because we know that God is our source of life. But Dr. Stern in this, in his commentary made, made the interesting and really, really life-changing, life-changing uh, comment on this verse that he says that, that in, in this verse, Paul is calling the Messian community in Philippi and us to, by example, to understand our full dependence on God and that and that by and that we see that there is a sense of of uh, combating combating pride continuing the the humility throughout the book that that Dr. Stern says that that by not taking everything to God in prayer there's a sense of pride in our own self that we can, that basically I can take care of this, you know. I don't need to pray about, you know, you know, my job is going good. I don't need to bring that to God. I've got that under control, you know, but, you know, I'm having, you know, difficulty with, uh, with you know, with this issue with, with a family member. So that's an issue I'll take to God in prayer. But no, Dr. Stern here is, is really makes the point that it's a matter. It's a matter of of our complete dependence on God and our complete rejection of 
of uh, of pride that that by not taking everything to God in prayer, somehow somehow saying I can take care of this, I can take care of that, you know, this I need to bring to prayer, you know, you know, I'm you know I'm I'm concerned about, you know, I'm concerned about you know a, a friend who tests positive for COVID. That's a big issue, so I'll bring that to prayer, you know. This issue here, well, I can take care of, you know, this disagreement with with uh, one of my coworkers, but no, but what we have here is a call that we need to bring everything to God in prayer. And in that we show our dependence on him and that he is our source for everything. And that's, that's no longer, no longer I can do some things, God can do some things, but our only source is God. God is the one who brings all together. And this, in this, we see Paul teach about humility in the case of humbly bringing all issues to God in prayer. The greatest act of humility is to lay all one's needs before God, knowing that he is the source of life and the true Lord and King, that he is the one that is the source of all that we need. And by not taking things to God in prayer, we are in essence, in essence saying, saying, well, I can do that on myself, that it's no longer God is, is the one that is the source of everything, but I can do this. We'll, 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 bring other, we'll bring the big things to him. I'll, I'll take care of the small things. But no, we're called to, to uh, here, as, as Dr. Stern is, is, is focuses on, is that all, all things we need to bring to God in prayer to show our humble acceptance of him as our source of everything. The greatest act of humility, as I said, is to lay all one's needs before God, knowing that he is the source of life and the true Lord and King. It's in this time of, of prayer, the Philippians can bring their most heartfelt needs and concerns before God. Simple prayers, like the ones Paul is recommending to the Philippians, are, are so important. And so in seeking to, to, to be humble servants, of our Lord and understand that that God, Yeshua the Messiah, is is our source of life. And we, as we bring all of our concerns to God in prayer, we show his lordship over his life. He is the only one that we can bring these needs and concerns to. So in doing that, we we show our dependence on him. We show that we are followers and we are the ones who are who know that he is our only source of life so this is our this is what we we're going to look at today the the, the first six verses of chapter four and uh, next week we'll be uh, looking at a later part of, of chapter four and uh, and conclude our our eight weeks of study here in the book of Philippians which is amazing this is our was our seventh week together so as we're talking about the importance of prayer, I'd we'll like to close in a word of prayer and we will uh, continue on with our service. Lord, you are good. We thank you. We bless your holy name. You are our God. We are your people. You are our Lord who provides all things. And Lord, help us to humbly bring to you all those things that we need, Lord. We thank you for your righteous servant, Paul, who gave us these words, Lord. Help us, Lord, to model them. And for those who are in leadership, Lord, help them to, to come together as one, to model, model the, the unity and the humility that you call all those who are in leadership to do as models of you and as models to the community. And we pray, Lord, for healing of our land, for both the, the pandemic and also for the various, various political up, uprisings and 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 uh, issues, Lord. We know that you are the only one who can bring hope and healing to our country. And we pray, Lord, for your guidance to those who are in leadership, Lord. And we continue, Lord, to pray for Rufuish Tlema, complete healing of body and soul for Rabbi Barry. We thank you, we rejoice, Lord, at, at the progress that he's made, Lord, and we continue, Lord, to, to call you to, to bring him back to full, full use of his, of his body and his full use of, of service to you, to the, to the community here in Baltimore, Lord. We thank you 
we bless your holy name and we thank you because of Yeshua, our righteous Messiah, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sean. Uh, we look forward to the conclusion of your teaching next Shabbat. See you then. Shabbat Shalom. We'll now begin to close our service with Elenu. Olenu le shabe akhla don ha ko lo take du la le otsebere shi se lo asanu ki yo ye harato lo samanu ki mishpukhot ha dama se lo sam khalkenu ko hem ve go rolenu ko hamonam Banach nu korim, umish tahavim, umodim, leaf ne melech, malche hamlochim, hakorosh baruchu. It is incumbent upon us to praise the Master of all, to exalt the Creator of the world, for He has made us distinct from the nations and unique among the families of the earth. Our destiny is not like theirs. Our calling is our task. We bow down and acknowledge before the King of Kings that there is none like him. For he stretched forth the heavens like a tent and established the earth. Truly there is none like our Lord and King. As the Torah says, you shall know this day and reflect in your heart that it is the Lord who is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath, there is none else. We hope, O oh Lord our God, to soon behold your majestic glory when all abominations shall be removed and all false gods shall be at an end. Then shall the world be perfected under the rule of the Lord Almighty and all mankind shall call upon your name for to you, every knee must bow and every tongue declare that you are God. Reign over us soon and forever. May the kingdom of David's greater son be established forever, for then shall the words be fulfilled. The Lord shall be king forever. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth on that day the Lord shall be one and his name one. Emar, Yahoya Arunai, Lemelech al Kohoretz, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ye Arunai Echad, Ushemao, Ushemao, Ushemao. Eat Gada, for eat Gada, Yeah.
chat feature on Zoom is open. Please type in your prayer requests and take this time also to lift up Rabbi Barry and Lisa in prayer. <laughs> May the source of healing in our lives bring healing to the world as we come together in prayer, lighting up our souls. When we remember that we are not alone, the circle grows. When we remember that we are not alone, it rings out to the
Lord, hear each and every one of these prayers and grant peace, goodness, blessing, grace, kindness, and mercy upon us and upon all Israel, your people. Bless us, our Father, all of us as one with the light of your face. For in the light of your face, you gave to us the Torah of life and love and kindness and righteousness and blessing and mercy and life and peace. May it be good in your eyes to bless your people Israel at all times and all years with your peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, who blesses your people Israel with peace. Shomer Israel, Shamor Sha'arit Israel, Be'ah Yovad Israel, Ha'omrim Shema Israel. Guardian of Israel, preserve the remnant of Israel, let them not perish, your people Israel, who affirm here, O Israel. And for our country, we lift up all of our elected and appointed officials. We pray earnestly that you would speak to each with your still small voice, so our leaders would make decisions based on your wisdom, not their own. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Betelem Kol, Yatsir Nivra, Lehem Nasa, Vechem Sokol, Asai Malach, Asai Malach, Shemu Nikna, Vechare, Kichrot
Am I doing this, Carrie? Hate to ask this late. Yeah. Okay. Yivarecha Adonai Vishmarecha Yaher Adonai Panav Elecha Vikunecha Yisra Adonai Panav Elecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom Yisra Adonai the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Prince of Peace, have a blessed Shabbat. Amen. <laughs> La 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 Please turn on your cameras and your microphones and greet one another now. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hey. Everyone. Hey. Shabbat Shalom. Wow. Hi guys. Hi guys. Everyone. Hey. So good to see your faces. Yeah. So good to see you, Sony. Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> We've missed you. Oh, I miss you guys too, but I have the kids in the house. I need to be making like a, a special service for them. She's, she's throwing her hand. And, uh, but today I finished like a little early. Yeah. So we... And I'm going to be, uh, we have a study at one o'clock, right? Yes. 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 I'll yes. be there. Yeah, Rabbi, I'll be back. One o'clock. Woohoo! Hey, hey. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Rabbi just had to leave for uh, um, therapy of some sort. Therapy. He just yeah. left, so he wanted me to say hello. He'll be back in time for the one o'clock. Awesome. Okay, good. And he is, they are so impressed with his progress.